channel i know it's been a while but look i'm gonna start vlogging more okay i'm gonna start vlogging more but today i want to talk to y'all about my breast reduction surgery and i got my ipad here because y'all i got notes because i don't want to miss anything so yeah um uh, but y'all know it's crazy so last summer i was making a vlog about my bbl and remember they canceled me so then it's crazy to fast forward to this summer and i actually went through with it and got the breast reduction surgery and honestly for me i feel like this was the better decision like this was the better decision for me personally like um i love my results i'm gonna show y'all my before and after at the end of this video so y'all gotta stay tuned so while i'm going down this list i am going to insert some clips to show y'all because i did pre-record like some videos earlier when i was going through the process and i do got like some pictures i want to show y'all but first let's talk about the consultation so on may 5th i went for my consultation and girl i was so nervous because in my mind i'm like i'm about to have to go in here and convince these people why i want it so that i can get it but it was like the total opposite i went into it and the surgeon came in there and he was basically convincing me like he was telling me all the benefits and stuff as to why i should get it so i was kind of relieved and like his staff his nurses and stuff they all were super super cool so i walked out of my consultation feeling super confident and that was on may 5th so then may 27th the lady at the front desk called me and was like you've been approved for your surgery she was like um we we ran it through insurance insurance is willing to pay 70 percent and you pay 30 percent and she was like you don't have to pay the money until um the day of surgery not the full thing i think it just was like a, a portion of it that i had to pay the day of surgery so i'm like okay cool so then she's like well when you want it done so i'm like I gotta think of a way to get this money by tomorrow. Huh? I gotta think of a way to get huh? I gotta think of a way to get this money by tomorrow. So I'm like, I don't know, like I wasn't expecting it to be this soon. So she's like, Well the two dates I got available now is June tenth and June seventeenth. She's like, Or you had to wait all the way to September. So I'm like, who wait until September? Like, girl, we getting this now. Like we getting this now, period. So I really wanted to go with the June 10th date, but I knew that I was gonna have the money in time. So I was like, let's do June 17th that it give me a little bit more room so I can get the money. Cause I'm like, I'm about to get paid soon. So I'm sitting here, you know, adding the numbers up in my head. Cause I'm like, I'm getting this done in June. Okay. So I told her, let's go with June 17th. So she was like, all right, cool. Got off the phone with her. So I'm hyped y'all. Like I'm super, super hyped. Then I get another phone call and they like, oh, well, since your surgery is so soon, we need you to come in for pre-op um, on May 31st. So I'm like, dang, like everything is happening so quick. Everything happened so quick that I'm just sitting here like, is this how it's supposed to happen? Like, does it normally happen this fast or is this a blessing? I don't know, but I'm here for it. Okay. So May 31st, I go for my um, pre-op appointment. I had two appointments. I had one with the... Um, surgeon and then my second one i had to get like lab tests done but let me tell you what happened when i went to the consultation with the surgeon so i go in there and it was really the nurse it wasn't the surgeon so she's sitting there talking to me she gave me the paperwork um to telling me what i need to do for pre-op like as far as what to stop eating what to stop drinking what medicines to stop taking and then she gave me this soap that i gotta wash my body with um the night before and the morning of so she giving me all the instructions for pre-op and post-op then she's like okay when you go out um the lady at the front desk gonna check you out so i'm like all right cool girl why i get to the front desk and the lady like oh yeah um time to pay so I'm like, hold, hold, hold up. Because y'all, I walked in there and I ain't had a full amount. So I'm sitting there like, what you mean? Like, what you mean it's time to pay? They told me the day of surgery. So I'm thinking, I don't need the money until June 17th. They wanted the money on May 31st at pre-op. And she was like, oh no, it's not the day of surgery. It's the day of pre-op. So y'all, I wanted to die. I wanted to die. I wanted to literally die. Because I'm like, it's always something. And I'm the type of person like, I feel like once you put something out there in the universe, like things go bad like things go bad and i was like even with my bbl like i felt like i put the video out there and i was telling everybody like oh i'm getting a bbl oh, i'm getting a bbl and then didn't get a bbl so i tried to do it differently this time i was like i'm gonna do everything secretive and then once i get it i tell everybody but i did tell a few people so when she did when she said oh you gotta pay i'm like i should never told nobody like i'm so dumb 
So I told her, I was like, listen, ma'am, um, I don't have the money today, but I can get it within the next couple of days. Just give me some time and I'll call and make the payment over the phone. She like, okay, cool. Girl got in the car, was about to cry in the car. I was about to cry in the car because I'm like, what I'm finna do? What I'm finna do? But I have a really great support system. So they helped me out and I was able to make the payment. And then I was super, super happy after that. I was like, look at God. Like the devil tried to stop me, but my family is like A1. So yeah. So at this point, I'm hyped now because I'm like, okay, the money paid. Surgery is what in two weeks? Like it's go time. It's go time. So um, I started getting my supplies and stuff. And I'm going to insert a clip to show y'all like all of the stuff that I got. So y'all, look at what my mama got me. I'm a stomach sleeper and I just knew I was going to be uncomfortable having to sleep on my back during this recovery process. So she had found this on Amazon and this is the brand soap. So I got two of these actually. I have to wash with these. Um, so I got to wash with one tonight. And then when I wake up in the morning, I got to wash with this bottle. Look for with a stick because... Um, the man said, I'm probably gonna be sore lifting my arms and stuff trying to wash, but I'm like, I gotta be clean. So, boom, I got this. Need a spawn because, um, it's from Kroger and everything from Kroger good. So I trust this. Um, I gotta use this for a week for my scars. And then after a week, I'm gonna switch over to this, which is the Aquaphor. And y'all don't come for me. I know it's small, but hear me out. I'm going on a trip in a couple weeks. And I need travel size because TSA not about to throw my stuff away after I done paid my money for this. No. And I got some pads because I'm going to be bleeding and stuff. A shirt that got pockets in it for the drains. Okay, so now it's the day of surgery. I had to get up super, super early. Then I had to take my wig off because they was like, oh, you can't have no metal clips in your hair. And you know the inside of the wig be having clips. So I'm like, do I go in here with the bow eye braids? Do I go in here? Do, do I take the braids out and go in here with a ponytail? Like, I'm trying to think, like, how am I going to go in here? So I was like, you know what? Let me um, let me just keep the braids in because it also said you can't have a ponytail holder. So I'm like, if I take the braids out, I'm going to have, like, a little fro. And if I can't put that in a ponytail, like, what am I going to do? So I just went in there with the bow eye braids. Good thing that they put this little bonnet on me so nobody could see my hair anyway. So that was good. Um, But uh, surgery was super, super early. They said that it was probably... I want to say, I want to say two and a half hours, but it felt like it was longer because me and my mom got there at, we got there at seven and I didn't leave there until like 12-ish, I think. No, why I feel like, I feel like it was later than that because I didn't get home till like 2.30. So I don't know, y'all do the math, but I just remember, um, they did like the anesthesia i rem i was still awake when we went inside the surgery room it was super cold in there and it was like a whole bunch of people sitting around there they put me on the table and after they put me on the table i don't remember nothing else and then when i woke up um i remember laying in the bed i was in pain it really was like my under boob that was in pain the most and the lady was like i'm gonna start giving you some medicine through the iv and she was like and then later i'm gonna give you like the pill so i'm like okay cool so um then i just remember having to pee and she was like you can't get up yet you can't get up yet so i'm like lord then finally she gave me some applesauce because you got to eat before you take the medicine so she gave me the applesauce i ate she helped me put my clothes on and then she was like i'm gonna put you in a wheelchair and then we're gonna take you to the bathroom girl get in the bathroom about to faint why i'm about to faint in the bathroom and she was like oh it's probably because it's so hot in here i'm like girl i am dying like help me save me help me save me so she gave me this little um it's something that you smell so it stop you from being like nauseous so she was like putting that over my nose and then she clipped it to like my clothes so i can keep smelling it and then y'all i had drains so she wheeled me over to my mom and she was teaching my mom how to um how to do my drains because my surgery was on a friday i wasn't getting the drains taken out until monday evening so throughout the whole weekend i couldn't shower and my mom had to keep like i call it pump and dump but she had to like I don't know, like she had to like pull the blood out into the little drain. And then once it got full, she had to dump it and she had to measure how many, how much blood was on each side. And she had to do that like two to three times a day. So she was my nurse. Like she was the bomb. Like I really love my mama. Like she's the best. Like I really got to do something good for her because she really was like on it. Like she was like the best nurse ever. So she was helping me with my drains. Um, so the whole weekend basically... I was in pain. I ain't even gonna lie. Like, 
I was in pain and they gave me the pain medicine and they was like, you can take it like every four to six hours, girl. Every four hours, like clockwork. I had my alarm set, okay? I wasn't missing no dose because that pain that I originally felt, I didn't want to feel that again. So I was like, if I keep taking these meds, like I won't give it time to wear off because I'm on it. Like it was hurting. Some people say, some people say that when they got their breast reduction, it didn't hurt. But I know people like heal differently. It was hurting for me. Like it was hurting for me. Where my meds, roaming my meds. Okay. So now we start in week one. So now week one, my drains, they took my drains out. They patched me up. They put, um, what's it called? Uh, dre the dressing, like the pads and stuff. And they put my bra back on. And then it was like, you can order some more bras, um, but they got to zip up for do this. So this bra I got, I actually got it from them. I had to pay $50 for this bra. So I was like, I'm not, uh-uh, y'all not getting another $50 from me. So I went on Amazon and got like a three pack for like 30 something dollars in this zip up. So I went home, got me some more bras. Um, what else? I still was sore like on my under boob. And I think it also was a combination of just the pain from the stitches and from the bra pressing up against it. So that was another thing. I was super, super itchy. Um, I was gassy and constipated at the same time. So they were saying like take um stool softeners to like help you use the bathroom because the medicine that they give you is gonna have you like constipated and then lances. Like I was backed up and gassy at the same time. Um, I had to use Neosporin on my incisions for the first week um and it was like they were like swollen and numb and i really didn't have no feeling like i was like trying to touch my my nipples to see if it was feeling girl it was no feeling i was sitting there like hold on i hope my feeling come back but i couldn't really feel nothing that first week so now we're on the second week um i was able to move around more so the first week i really was like in the bed watching tv and stuff so the second week i was moving around the house moving slow of course but i was able to move more um, I was still itchy and sore. Uh, I was no longer using Neosporin at this point. I switched over to Aquaphor. Um, so I was putting Aquaphor all over my boobs. Um, what else? Uh, so nipple peeling. So my surgeon didn't give me like no handbook to tell me like, oh, this is what to expect during the healing process. So when my, um, when my nipple started peeling, girl, I'm on Google. I'm on Facebook, like in surgery groups. I'm calling my friend who had it before. I'm asking people like, is this normal? Like, is they supposed to peel? But they, the way they were peeling was like, it was finna come off. So I was like kind of scared a little bit. But everybody was saying like, that's normal. Like, it's just healing. Like, it's gonna peel, but it's gonna come back. Um, and then I started to feel, um, I started to get feeling again in, in my nipples. It was like very faint, but the feeling was starting to come back. Um, and then when I took a shower, so you know how like when your nipples try to get hard, so like I get out of the shower to be cold in the house and my nipples will try to get hard. But since I just had surgery, it was like burning every time they tried to get hard. I was like, Lord Jesus, please, please soothe this pain. It was like burning a little bit. And then I also started feeling like, um, like a lightning bolt, like, like weird, like, sharp pains out of nowhere and i'm like is this normal so now i'm back on google because i'm like what is this week three so week three i'm like able to move more like more than i was the second week like i feel like i'm back to myself even though i know that on the outside you look like you healed but it takes longer to heal internally so i knew that i had to still move with caution but i felt like i was me again like i was back up i went and got my hair done like i felt like i was good um sleeping so i forgot to mention this for week one and week two but y'all you can't sleep on your side or your stomach so i was literally sleeping on my back and that was so uncomfortable to the point where i was waking up at like four o'clock in the morning two o'clock in the morning just up because i'm uncomfortable so i wasn't sleeping good throughout the night so that means during the day i was like tired and like napping a lot but by week three i was like okay like i'm good now like it's still like hard to sleep on my side, but it's more comfortable to sleeping on my back. So now I'm starting to go back to sleep on my side. I still can't sleep on my stomach, but I'm starting to get some more sleep. So that was good. Um, what else? Um, still sore, still numb, nipples slowly coming back. Um, 
so yeah so and that's also for week four um i did have my post-op appointment um i was supposed to have it two weeks after surgery but he was booked so we did three weeks when i went to my three week follow-up appointment he was like um he's like you're healing really really good uh, he was like your nipples are healing slower than the rest of your incisions so he was like continue to put aquaphor on them continue to cover them up and then put the the pads to cover them up and then put the bra back on so he was like continue to wear sports bras and that open up and zip up and all of that in the front for a couple more weeks um he told me i could start using like scar scar cream i haven't bought any yet because i'm still trying to research like what's the best one to use so if y'all have any recommendations put it in the comments put it in the comments but um he was like yeah i could start using that for my incisions underneath um and still keep using aquaphor until my nipples heal once they're completely healed i can switch to scar cream for that um what else he told me um oh he said to come back in a month because we're gonna take a picture so that i can see my before and after and i'm gonna also show y'all my before and after because girl it's drastic okay like it's drastic i literally went from an h to a c like that's drastic and even when i look at them now like it's kind of hard to not really hard to adjust but it's an adjustment looking at them because i'm so used to being one way and then seeing it now it's like it's crazy like it's crazy they cute but it's just crazy seeing like the difference i'm gonna show y'all the before and after matter of fact um i have a video clip of the before but i'm gonna put on the same outfit and come back and show y'all you see, it's a little greasy because I still got the aquaphor on it. But this is me from the side. Tiny, right? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And then you can see the difference between, I'm going to put it right here, what I was before and what I am now. Like, huge difference. This is an H. This is a C. I don't know. I think it was like a 38. 38, 36. I, I don't remember the number. I'm going to have to look back at my bra but that's what i was here and this is where i am now like girl he got me all the way together if y'all have any questions that i didn't go over um just put them in the comments or y'all can message me i'll make another video if it's like a lot of questions but if it's like one or two questions y'all could just put it in the comments i'll answer it in the comments so that everybody can see the answer um but yeah that's my breast reduction vlog that's my story um it is one of the best decisions that i've ever made like i'm so happy with my decision i'm so happy that i i opted to get this over the bbl and y'all god be knowing he be knowing because i wanted that bbl real bad like i wanted that bbl real bad and it didn't happen for me so then this year i was like you know what let me get a breast reduction well at least let me look into it and then boom look at god look at god yeah i got some vlogs coming up so y'all make sure y'all subscribe and i guess i'll see y'all in my next video Thank you.